We've got Refran del Dia in a second that we're going to do with my father. He has rushed in because the Heat playoffs are about to start, and he's got opinions, and he's fired up, and he is ready for playoff basketball. And he's gotten ready by eating a bunch of trail mix, chewing it up right now. The whole room smells like peanuts, and he is ready to give you his Miami Heat opinions and also to break down Refran del Dia with us. Who do you want, Poppy? Who do you want the Heat to play in the first round? What are we thinking here? Well, they gotta they gotta play somebody tough like the Hornets. Mm. Okay, my father's a coward. <laughs> uh, my father is scared. He prefers easy games. He does not. He said he wanted last week. He wanted the Pistons, who are not in the playoffs. But before we get started, uh, Whittingham, I think my father had a good question when he asks the question. Uh, what the hell is with these play-in games? He doesn't understand. He wants somebody to explain it to him. So, Poppy, what is the nature? What is the nature of your confusion? Well, you know, what is the reason for seven playing eight and uh, nine playing ten? You know, I'm still confused about that. You know, they wanted to expand the playoff field yeah. so that more they teams had a chance to get in. There was more jeopardy. Perhaps try and have fewer teams tank, no. as has been a problem throughout the no. NBA. So you have ten no. uh, ten teams get in. No. The top six are in automatically, and seven through ten have to qualify via a playoff. No, Poppy, they invented this stupid thing so that LeBron gets in the playoffs every year, exactly. no matter how bad the Lakers are. No. Okay. Except yeah. it didn't work this year for him. So now next year, next everybody year it'll be, makes it'll the playoffs. Be 11 yeah. teams make the play Every in? single team makes the playoffs next year just so LeBron can get in. Okay. Well, it's still, I'm still confused anyhow. It still doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, Billy, <laughs> I, I need some help with my father because he's a bit rusty in retirement. He has hated LeBron so strong, and he sort of used that fuel of Skip Bayless on television, railing against LeBron until LeBron, uh, LeBron bought him a bunch that's of pizzas. That's the thing. Once he got the pizzas, Poppy, ah, I think that's that it. changed. That's, a, that's right, yeah. I changed my mind about LeBron. Yeah, mm -hmm. I need more pizza. That's right. Is he around so we can get some free pizza? Poppy, how did my how how was LeBron able to buy you with ten pizza pies that he sent from? Uh, it, does that pizza distributor still sell pizza? I haven't heard about that pizza since then. What's that? what's the name of the? Uh, I don't know. Blaze pizza. Pizza. Yeah, pizza. Yeah, Blaze Pizza. Yeah. That's the, the best pizza in town, especially when it is free. Oh. Did you notice how Bobby will never forget the name of Blaze Pizza, but you could ask him about things of your childhood maybe, and he wouldn't remember some of those things? Right. But, I mean, the free pizza brought him joy, Dan. Well, right. LeBron, my father has claimed that his celebrity has never brought him anything except one time he was in Pembroke Pines and someone bought him half a tuna sandwich. That's my father it. says it's the only thing his celebrity has ever gotten him, and yet here he was purchased by 10 Blaze Pizzas, from LeBron James after just crushing LeBron on television. And uh, at one point, my mother said this, because this is true of my father. My father said he's been a Heat fan all his life. He's been supporting them since LeBron got here. That was a sentence. What's my, wrong with that? That's, that's a sentence my, <laughs> my father actually said. And then at one point, my mother claimed that my father loved LeBron more than he loved me. Because of how public he, he had certainly given LeBron more public praise and defense than he ever had of me. That part cannot be disputed. And then my father turned on LeBron. But LeBron's not a part no, of these playoffs. No, no, LeBron turned on your father. Yeah. Let's not get this mixed us. up. LeBron turned on all of us. Yep. And then he tried to smooth things over with free pizzas. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But Poppy didn't do anything to LeBron. Poppy was there since day one, as you stated, when LeBron got here, yeah. and he was ready to be there till the end. And then LeBron quit on this city and on Poppy specifically. Yep. That's right. He, I mean, uh, Billy got it right. <laughs> he you. quit on me mm -hmm. and on this city and on everyone who loved him. I never said anything bad about LeBron. Poppy. No, he never oh. said anything. Poppy. Ever. Wow. He's ne Poppy. Look, never. Dan, Poppy. Dan, Dan. Ooh, Dan. I never said anything he's never. bad about he's LeBron. Never. You never. called him LeGroin. You That's called him That's the truth. He said the truth uh, about LeBron. Now, it could be harsh, but sometimes people need a reality check, and that's what Poppy is here to offer LeBron, the truth. He's not here to kiss LeBron's butt like a lot of people yeah. do around him. He's going to tell you the way things actually are. And some people might think that it's mean, but if anything, the relationship Poppy has with love. LeBron is probably love yes. and one of the most honest relationships that LeBron has in his life. Yes. He got it right. All right, he got it right, my father whimpers into the microphone. This lifelong love that yeah. began on July the 8th, 2010. <laughs> that that's right. It began, that's right. It's when my Cuba's father. arrows struck. I have been, uh, That he actually said that. He said it on television. I've been with the Heat all their life. 
I've been here since LeBron got here. My father went to Heat games in the finals, and all he did was mother bleep Shaq for missing free throws. My father is the bandwagon guy of all bandwagon <laughs> He's people. honest. Yeah. T- tell me everybody wasn't thinking that when Shaq was missing free throws. Yeah, I mean, he makes a lot of money. He should make a few, few, few I mean, free throws once in a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And his pride got in the way, Dan, if you remember correctly. His pride got in the way. Everybody, Poppy included, was saying, you know what? Do the granny shot. Do it Rick underneath Barry. if yep. you have right. to yeah. and get it in. Because it. we are here to win a championship <laughs> and score points. And if you're at the charity stripe, they're just giving you those points. Free. So you need to set your ego aside and make the points to reach the common goal of winning this city a championship. The name of the game is winning at any cost. Mm-hmm. doesn't yeah. matter how bad you look on the court. There was whatever. one game in that final spot, P, game five, where Shaq was 2 of 12 from the free throw oh, line. That's right. Get points Bana. left on the yeah. board. Embarrassing. Did yeah. they win that game? They did. Mm. Oh, they could have okay. won by more. Yeah. Cost them the game, even though they won it. Yeah. <laughs> we will get to Refran del Dia in a second. Uh, Whittingham, were you surprised at all? I saw what seemed like genuine delight on your face this morning when Sam Madison and Patrick Sertan came through here, and you were able to remember for just a moment dolphin excellence. You've had precious little of it in your life, and I thought that the big surprise of that interview, perhaps I should not have been surprised, is that blabbermouth, historic trash talker Sam Madison is willing to say that Xavier Howard is right there as the best cornerback in franchise history. And Sertan is like, no, he is not. He needs to do three or four more seasons of 15 interceptions in two seasons before he's allowed to be the best cornerback in Dolphin history. That's fairly controversial for Patrick Sertan. Madison was the big mouth, but Sertan was like, he is not the best corner ever yet. Yeah, I mean, well, they're both on the coaching staff now. Sam Madison, though, has the title of cornerbacks coach. Patrick Sertan is part of the defensive staff. But when you're the cornerbacks coach, you know, you got to make sure that the guy who just signed to an extension is, you know, feeling good about himself. I think deep in his heart of hearts, Sam Madison feels like there's nobody that's been better than Sam Madison. I, I, I could be wrong, but I feel like there's more of the Sertan and Madison that he would let on. Yeah. Why do we have a heart of hearts? It's, it's, like, does our heart have a heart? Uh, that is what he is saying. He's asking. It, there's one layer that would choose different quarterback tan, cornerback tandems, but then when you get to the layer that is the heart, the beating heart at the center of a beating heart, you have found where Chris Whittingham keeps his greatest sports joy, which is a secret sports joy for the Miami Dolphins uh, that he hides mostly because it's wrapped in hurt. It's it's a great deal of pain, but those two dudes made you happy. Those two guys, and they made you happy at least in part because you could trust them. Something disastrous was not going to happen behind them. Well, you made a great point during the interview with, and you were trying to do it delicately with Terrell Buckley, where like there's no, one of there are few things worse as an NFL fan than the corner you don't trust. For for me as a Dolphins fan for ten years, it's been the entire offensive line that I don't trust, and there are like specific names over the course of time. I Roy is right. I think like Eli Apple is like a modern version of this, where it's just like he's a guy, he's got a reputation, but his reputation is getting smoked. Yeah, it cost the Bengals, man, and it's terrible. It's terrible to have that. And I'm sure if you ask any fan base, word association corner that gives up too much they will have a name that I don't know. For me, it's oh, Jam- for, sure. for me, it's Jamar Fletcher. Oh man. Well, like, before that, I go before that. No, I slot. go J.B. Brown. I go before that. Oh, but my every, God. Yeah, every, every team, I do believe if we went throughout history, every team has a uh, – uh, every city has a corner that they hate, a name they remember because so many games were ruined by, damn it, just don't allow the 80-yard play. Why do you keep gambling? But Xavier Howard does both. He gambles and doesn't lose. It's incredible. He gambles. He he is a turnover machine because you look at the receivers. I saw a list of this the other day. It's not just that he's got 15 interceptions the last two years. His assignments have been like guys who break you over their knee. His assignment, he's not he, he's not doing a whole lot of guarding of third and fourth receivers. They're, they're people that can get open against anybody. But let's do Refran Del Dia here with my father. Are you ready for the playoffs, Dad? What are you looking forward to here? Who, who are you scared of? Give me some heat analysis here as the playoffs are about to start. Who are you excited about? Well, I'm excited about the Heat making the playoff. You know what I mean? Number one seeded. That's that's a hell of an accomplishment for the entire season. Bunch of no names. They made it happen. Well, four names they've got. 
What they, four names they got? The only, only known player that they had was Billy Butler. That's it. Nobody else. That's Ooh. right. Uh, Billy no, Butler? Right. Yeah. Let me ask you something, Poppy. I Maybe. see this Max Struess is trying to stir shit up on the internet where he's putting out these fight posters with you. Yeah. It's well, even falta respeto, this yeah, guy out FDR. there, <laughs> trying know, to make, make a mockery of this situation. Yeah. I think you need to whoop his ass. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> I'll give him a pass for the time being because my wife cares about the guy. I don't want him That's looking nice. bad in front of everybody. Yeah. You know? I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to. My wife is going to be very sad mm -hmm. if I beat the crap out of That's him. So. And and yeah. now, Dan, this is also the time of the year where you're going to need him for the city for the playoff run. So the worst thing that Poppy could do is give him what's coming to him and hurt him before the yeah. playoffs. That's why Poppy honestly represents this city and the Heat better than the likes of LeBron and Shaq, who are out there being selfish. Where Poppy thinks, you know what, this guy needs to be taught a lesson. But we can wait until the playoff run is over. And then after the championship parade and after the trophy and all that, then he'll get what's coming to him. That's right. Mm -hmm. Billy got it right. Billy got it right. Okay. Billy's getting a lot of things right here. Incredible. Uh, Udonis Haslam has taken the side of my father and said that he would indeed kick uh, Max Struess's ass. For those of you who do not know, uh, my mother has a crush on Max Struess. My father's enraged by this, but my father's taking the high road and saying, even though Max Struess says anytime, any place, because he has welcome. He confronted Poppy and said, anytime you want to mm. actually do this. Mm, he did not confront Poppy, hardly. On the internet, he did it. Twitter tough guy. Your mom has a crush on Max Struess, and Poppy will crush Max Struess. Yes. I'm laying, I'm laying low. I'm laying low on that Okay, one. he's laying low, but Real he's Real G's moving in silence like uh, lasagna. Yes, this guy gets yeah. it. Well, he also, this Poppy, he also called you Giovanni, which I thought was Giovanni. real. Well, I just called Jimmy Butler, Billy Butler, so that was just right. yeah. the tongue. Ball player. <laughs> okay, so an innocent mistake. You're taking the high road at every turn, even though he insults you by calling you Giovanni. Let's do El Refrán del Día. Ah, dímelo, mi gente. Papi, ¿cómo está la cosa? Bien, bien. Todo bien. After, after last week, you know, protocols and whatnot, I wasn't able. I saw what happened. I was watching the video. I was very disappointed in Billy and Lewis at their, their inability to be able to properly give you un refrán that actually hits home. So let's spin the wheel. Well, let's what do happened? it. Well, explain, can you explain to me what I do want to know what happened where they've all been great with you, Tony, right, and, and great sometimes because they're awful. You spray people in the face mm. or or the word is embarrassing. But Billy and Lewis, when you were out, they basically seemed to just get afraid of the word yeah. and the, the segment stunk without you. Imagine it's the pageantry. It's the stuff you come to expect with Refran, the hottest. Not only the hottest segment in Miami, now the hottest segment that's sweeping the nation. So very exciting about that. But it's about the pageantry. It's about giving you the word. It's about giving you the phrase. It's about giving you the wheel, just the view of it. People that get the vision, Dan, get the vision. Let's spin this damn wheel. Spinning. Spinning. Oh, it just landed. Oh, I hope it stays there. Why is it perfect? Can you read it, Lewis? It's probably I can't read it not. Descarao. Descarao. Oh, Papi, there un it tipo, is. Un descarao. What does uh, that mean, Papi? Es un descarado. Go ahead, Papi. Define that for the people. It's a sneaky one. A guy that will do anything to get his way. Exactly. Oh, a guy so with no right. face. Okay. Very shifty. Yes. Yeah. Literally has no cara. <laughs> no cara. Yeah, descarado yeah. has so, no cara. Like, it's literally... It's, Literally means without a face. Without a face. Yeah. yeah. The, the person is so shameless that you can't tell what their face looks like because they are they are somebody you can never tell what their intentions are. Descarado is sort of Spanish for Stugats, right? <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. true. But it's not two faced. It's no, no face, right? No it's face. without a face. Without a face. And yeah, that's yeah. the highest insult that you can do. Well, it's not the highest insult, but it's a it's a, how offensive is it to call somebody a descarado, like how, how, what, are you saying something truly terrible about them? Well, you know, the guy is a real uh, sneaky one, a guy that will, will play by the rules of the game, you know, a guy that will try to get away with everything, you know. Uh, that's it, you know, I mean, that's what it is. It, uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, sounds like a Stugat, his very best. 
But in typical refrain de dia fashion, it could also be a term of endearment. Yes. Like, ah, ese tipo es un descarado. Exactly. <laughs> ese See, tipo es un descarado. Now, explain descarado. this, you know this papi. I, I was trying to explain the other day. I forgot, Billy. One of the great things about refrain del dia is it can mean four things. And I had regret the other day because I said, Nyo que barato, que, que barato was just, holy shit, how cheap that is. Yeah. And Nyo que barato, uh, holy shit, I can't believe how ch cheap that is. But it's also, holy fuck, I can't believe how cheap that is. And also, holy fuck, I can't believe that's so cheap. So it's four. And also, where did I park my boat? Yes. <laughs> that too, as well. Where are we on this meaning what Billy says it means, Poppy? It doesn't just mean something that's an insult, but it's also a compliment. Okay. Ese descarado. Ese de So it's like a jocular thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like yeah. a yeah. 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 tremendo descarado yeah. tipo este. Mine is como gofio, it's a descarado also. I don't know, being a compliment, but did you say so? Fine, you know? Okay, if you More say so, school. fine. More new school. Yeah. Uh, my father does not agree with this, and the segment peters out because my father has bailed on the idea of it. Ah, que descarado. Descarado.